Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this beaded version of the Egyptian coil bracelet. So I personally like how you can really add some colour and sparkle into this design by adding in the beads. And I'm also going to show you how you can make your own clasp to finish off the bracelet. So if you want to learn how to make it, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to use. All we're going to need is our wire and our beads. And the wire that I'm using is a 0.8mm silver coated copper wire. And I'm also going to use this to make the clasp with. Now of course you can attach your own clasp, that's completely up to you. And then the beads I'm using are these 4mm rounds here. So all you got to make sure with the beads that you're using is that the holes are large enough to take your wire through. And these are then the pliers that I'm going to be using. Now first of all of course we need some cutters to cut the lengths of wire that we use. So I've got my flush cutters here. And then I've got some chain nose pliers as well. So these are just to generally maneuver the wire. And then also pretty much probably the most important ones in my opinion are these six step bell making pliers. I use these a lot because I'm using certain steps on these pliers to make sure I get the same size loops which I need to make on every single link. So just to make sure they get as consistent as possible. I highly recommend these pliers. So let's get our materials and our tools ready and let's get started. So I've now cut my lengths of wire here and I have a bunch ready and each of these lengths is 15 centimeters. So what I like to do is I cut the first length against a measuring tape and then I use that first length to cut the rest against to make them as even as possible. And also I make sure I straighten my wire while the wire is on the reel before I actually cut them just so there's no unwanted bends or kinks in there. So then I'm going to show you how to make the links here. Now of course we need a length of our wire so I'm just going to grab one at a time and then I'm also going to use some chain nose pliers here because we need to obviously add the beads along the way as well. So I'm going to show you how I like to do that. I start on one end because we're going to make the coils from each end and bring them in towards the middle of the wire. So I place my chain nose pliers here, not completely at the end but a little bit in because I'm kind of going to compare it to my bead, a little bit the length of the bead. It doesn't have to be exact. But what we need to do is I'm going to put a little bend into this. So just about 90 degrees like that. Because this little bend right at the end is going to be inside the bead. And you want to make sure it's not longer than the bead because we want it to the end there to actually finish inside of the bead. So like that, if I can just kind of grab a bead and show you the point of it. Add the bead, you can see the wire is not coming out on the other end. And that's also then finishing off the ends without having to worry about the rough wire ends. But then we have that first little 90 degree bend. Now what I like to do is because it's a little bit kind of trickier to shape the wire when we're adding the beads. So I kind of like to prepare the shape, the wire a little bit first. So I'm starting to, we just made that 90 degree bend. I'm going to continue in that same direction, go a little bit further out the wire and start bringing it around, continuing, making sure I get nice curves around here, going to the other side, bringing it further around. And basically like, like before, imagine that bead is going to sit in there on that end of the wire. So you want to make sure there's space for the bead. But obviously space to be able to add it as well. So just bring it in. Because the wire is going to be coiling around the bead like this. But obviously we just need to be able to add it. So I have something that looks a little bit like this. You can kind of see the first bend, the 90 degree angle, and then the spiral statin but it's still open because I need to be able to add the bead in, which I'm gonna do now. So you wanna grab your bead and then you wanna basically just add it to the very end. So just kind of push it in if you need to into that little spiral. You can see it's sitting right there. But what we want is for the wire here to sit right up close against and around the bead. So this is kind of how you prefer to do it yourself. You'll probably find out as you make it. I like to kind of make sure that this bit of the wire sits right up against the side of the bead first of all. So I like to take the bead and push it against that side of the wire. You can see there it's made it closer. Then 
I start pushing it towards the top here. But because we've already made that kind of spiral shape, that helps us with the shape on the wire. So I'm just pushing the bead close to the wire so we end up with the wire as close around the bead as possible. And basically, continue rolling it. Now you can see here now I've reached the point where the wire is coming out from the bead, so I've gone a full way around the bead. Now we want to continue, but you want to make sure that as I'm continuing this, the wire is going to lay flat next to each other so we don't want it to overlap, either go over or under the wire in any way you want it to lay next to it next to itself but otherwise continue now again you find your own rhythm of how to do this so you can use your fingers and hands, you can also, if you find that's a little bit of a struggle you can go in, especially now once we have the two wires lay next to each other, there's a bit more space take your chain nose pliers and grab onto the wire like that and then continue it around that's also an option if you prefer if you find it hard to grab onto the bead and the wire here because obviously there isn't that much to grab onto and the bead does move kind of spin on the wire there but what I like to do is kind of get it to this point where I've done two full rounds and another thing with the pliers as well is it's good to use that to make sure the wire is flattened so it lays flat next to each other there so it's another benefit of using the pliers which you can obviously do anyway, just flatten it out but I've now got the two full rounds around the bead there so I'm going to stop there for now and then I'm going to go to the other end and basically just repeat the same thing so I grab my pliers and then place them right on the end of the wire but just a little bit in like a millimeter or two now what I also do is I make sure that the spiral I already did on the other end is facing up and away because I'm going to bend this and make this in the exact same way so that way they're going to be facing each other now it's not too crucial to get it exact because we can adjust that but then you just want to first of all do the 90 degree bend and then continue it makes nicer curves if you go a little bit further out the wire and bring it around Go to the other side. You can also help push if you need to. You can see get it fairly tight around, but so you know you have enough space to add that bead in. Something probably a bit like this. Then we we'll grab the other bead and put it right onto the end of the wire. Like that and then just close this up so obviously the bead can't fall off so first of all I push the bead against the wire on the side and then I start pushing it to tighten the wire all the way around like that and now again you can see I have one full round so we now want to start the next round by doing it next to the wire so basically it increases the size of the spiral so I'm going to continue that until I've gone around two times two full rounds just like the other end so something a bit like this and you can now see that they're pointing in the same direction as well pretty much but then we need to now adjust the distance between the two so you basically just want to keep coiling and keep the spiral doesn't matter what end you start on bringing it around some more so another half way around the bead I've done on that side that's personally what I prefer to do kind of do a little at a time rather than that because you can always do slight little adjustments and then I'm going to go to the other end do the same thing just bring it around half way around the bead something a bit like that and then I also want to bring in my measuring because what I want to make sure to do is you can make this different but what I like is for my links to be close to each other really quite tight if you want more space between your links 
then you'll need this bit to be longer. But what I like to do is to get about 2.2 centimeters between the two ends. So you can see that's not quite there, but not too far off. So I need to coil them in just a little bit more. Now I also like to try and get the two sides obviously as even as possible. Along the way you can also just remember to use your pliers if you need to. So I need to push them in a little bit more, but only a little bit on either side. So I'm going to try something like that. Go to the other side and just do a tiny little bit on that to get them as similar as possible. And then I'm going to measure. Now when I'm saying measuring, I'm measuring between the insides of the spirals. So I'm not measuring, for instance, on the base here, so from the midpoint or from the outer point, I'm actually measuring the inside of the spirals, which in this case, it looks to be actually pretty good. Now, this is then, if you're making the first link, obviously you can then you use your measuring tape. If you're then from then on making more links, what I personally like to do is I make my first link and then after that, I keep referring back to the very first link. So for instance, this was my first link. This is another link that I've just made. And I actually use my first link to refer back to with all the others. It's just personal preference. You can also keep using measuring tape, it's up to you. But then I basically use the first link to gauge and then you can see with the size between them. Now you can also, if you need to, if you feel that you've gone too far, you just open it back up a little bit. And then you keep measuring against until you feel that they're basically as similar as possible, the distance between the insides of the spirals. And then you just want to keep making your links like this, adding the beads in as well. Now, once you brought the two ends together and if you find that they're kind of wonky from each other, as you can see here, what you just do is flatten them out so they become as flat as possible. So you end up with your finished link. So I've now gone through and made all my links here. You can see I have a bunch of them. And now what we need to do is they're still straight, but we now need to put some shape into this so we can actually start linking them together. And this is then where I want to start using my six step bell making pliers because I'm going to be using certain size loops on here. So I know exactly what size I'm going to get and it's going to be consistent with each link. So I grab my first link here and then to begin with I'm going to be using the third largest step on my pliers. So what I'm going to do is put my pliers onto the midpoint as much as possible in between the two spirals. So like that. And I'm using the loop up here or the step on the pliers up there. And I've got the two spirals pointing towards me. What I'm then going to do is grab onto the two spirals at the same time and just start pushing them up. You can also do one at a time, doesn't really matter. Now get it, the pliers as much in the middle as possible. It's not too, it doesn't have to be precise because what we then do is we obviously want it to be as even as possible. So as much in the middle, but we can also fix that as we bring these around because if you find that, say, I'm just going to move it a little bit and show you what I mean. You can see this one is going to be a little bit shorter than the other one. What you can do before bringing them completely together is you just push the other one a little bit more. And you can even then open one up if you need to. You can see they still then end up being pretty even because you bring them all the way close to each other. So they meet up like that. Don't overlap or anything, just sitting right next to each other. And you can see, oops, we then have the finished link. Now what we just need to do is also shape this. So I'm gonna grab my first link here that we then need to start shaping so we can connect them. And I have my pliers. Now I'm gonna be using the third largest step on my pliers here for this part, the first part. And then I'm gonna place my pliers in the middle of my link as much as possible. Just judge that by eye something like that. And then we need to push these two ends. Now they're pointing down towards me. I'll just 
then I'm going to push the two upwards. So you can see the two spirals are going to be on the outside like that. Now what you might find is that they need to be even as much as possible. So that's why we need to place the pliers in the middle. If you find that that's not going to be the case, you can kind of see if I'm going to keep pushing these, this side is going to be shorter. So it was a mis bit miscalculated, but don't worry about it because all you can do is just push the other side a bit more before you then bring them all the way together. So you can see that already has now evened them out. So if you find that one, as you're pushing them together before you push them completely, seems to be a little bit shorter, you just push the longer one closer because then it uses up more of the wire as you're making the loop here. And you can see we end up with this shape. Now I'm going to switch to using the smaller step on my pliers here. So I'm just going to take the link that I literally just made that loop on. Now we want to bend this loop back on itself so it's not sticking out from the two spirals like this. So I'm going to take that smaller step on my pliers and kind of place my pliers on this side of the spiral that's facing towards the spirals facing towards the loop there. Then I'm going to take the loop and push it against my pliers and basically bring it all the way around something like that and then I like to kind of you can kind of see it sticking out a little bit still I like to go in and just grab just around those two wires and then just push down on the spirals a bit because it just kind of tucks it in a bit more and there we have a link ready so you don't want to push that open the big loop there right close to the two spirals because we're not doing that until we actually start connecting them because obviously we need to just have that opening to be able to connect the links together so once you've gone through all your links and shaped them then we need to start putting them together so i'm just going to grab a few at a time so i've got one is if you remember as well mentioned to make sure to leave those open the large loops there so what you want to do is you have two here that's facing the same direction so this is how they're going to be certain when they're attached together so we need to just flip that around add this large open loop into the other one and I'm starting kind of in this direction here upside down with the one I'm adding into it going in between the loop and the spirals and then this can be a little bit fiddly if you need to you can always open up the loops a little bit more from the spirals but force that loop into the other one and then you bring it out and it's going to sit in the same direction and in the same way now the uh, they are attached together but obviously it's all a bit loose and that's then where we want to go in and now close up the links which also then makes them secure so I'm going to do not the one I just added into the other one I'm going to do the very first one that I added the new one into I'm going to then basically just squeeze from the top and I've got a finger behind on the large loop there so I'm squeezing the large loop close to the spirals basically so closing up that gap that we left so that's closed up now on the first one so this new one isn't just going to be able to slip out as you can see there isn't really room for that and then all you want to do now is keep going like this grab another link and we're now going to build on from this grab your next link put the large loop in between the loop and the existing link and the spirals kind of like to go in from the side and then slip it in and then bring it out into place and once I've done that and it's sitting in the right place, I go in and then squeeze close the previous open loop like that, but always keeping the new link that I just attached open because obviously it needs to be kept open to add the next one into. But you can see we still have movement in the chain, you can call it. But they are securely attached together when you make sure to squeeze them like this. So you just want to keep adding your links together like that. So now I added all my links together here, as you can see. 
and it has a really nice movement and you can see as well the links stay together nicely because we close up that opening. Now the very final link here that I added, I haven't closed that one up yet because we now need to make the clasp as well and we need to be able to attach that into there. And to do that I've cut off another two links on my wire here and they're the same length that I use for the links as well. So I'm just going to start with one of them. Now I'm then placing my chain hose pliers on my wire here and it's close to the middle, it's not quite in the middle but almost, it's about six centimeters or so in from one end. And then what I'm gonna do is just put a little bend, something like that. Not 90 degrees, but just something like that here. And what we're basically gonna do is something similar to the links because we need to attach this clasp in the same way but obviously we're not making those spirals or beads we're just making the clasp bend instead but i'm going to use first of all the same step that i used to shape to push the two spirals together i'm going to use that step and then this is the shorter end and the longer end is down here i'm going to then place get it right real round, my pliers a bit further down from that bend and then the short end here I'm going to bring all the way around till the wire comes back up and meets up with where that bend is and then obviously we can just take our time and adjust it here now this looks something like that and then I'm just taking my chainers again and what I want to do is basically this little end that I now have left I want to start wrapping that around the wire that's right on the other side of that first bend that we made so I'm just placing my pliers right before that bend and then I'm going to bring the short wire up and start wrapping it around nice and tight wraps so about two to three times I want to do so something like that should be fine if you need to you can always tighten up the wraps now this end is the part that's going to link into the last link that's still open so I'm just going to leave it like that for now what I'm then going to do is cut off the excess here of the wire and then always when you cut off make sure so you squeeze the very end down like that. Now we then have this length left here what I'm going to do with that is make the hook part of the clasp. So it's really up to you how you want that to be how large you want it to be. So I'm flipping this round to the front again. I cut off the wire kind of on the back side. And then what I want to do is go up a little bit. Like I said, it's up to you how long you want your hook to be. I like them to not be too long. But obviously you need to remember as well, it's going to get bent back on itself. So you kind of need it double the length of how long you want your hook to be. Now what I'm then going to do is we need to bend this end completely back on itself. So I just want to push that against my pliers and this time you want to push it all the way so basically it's going to come down next to itself. So something like that. Now what you want to do is tighten this up almost like making a prong. So we don't really have an opening here, as tight as you can get it, something a bit like that. And then obviously we just want to, if we need to straighten these wires out, so this comes straight down next to itself basically. Adjust anything you need to, and when you're happy with how that bit looks, then 
I'm going to place my pliers down by where the previous wrap is, but I don't want to place it right on top of it. We need to leave just a little bit of space because we need to leave space to wrap this wire here. So first I'm going to push it up against my pliers and then I'm going to start bringing it over the top towards the opposite side. Just start wrapping around that little space that we left. And you basically now want to wrap until, just make sure I don't wrap over the top, overlapping. You want to wrap them nice and tight next to each other. We'll wrap until you basically don't have any more space left and you run into the end of the other wire that you cut off. And once you run out of space to wrap it in more, you want to cut off the excess as close as possible and then of course just push down that end. And then basically what you've ended up with is the two wire ends are kind of budging up towards each other like that. So it also gets rid of them nicely. So make sure you can't feel anything there. And then we have this little component in place. Now that loop end is what's going to attach to the bracelet and this is going to be the hook. So we just need to finish shaping the hook. So I'm going to place some, in this case I'm using my six-step bell making pliers again. You can use round nose pliers. About the midpoint and then push the end back on itself. until it kind of comes down to meet with itself where it starts, but don't push it all the way close. I'm going to do a little bit more because what I then like to do is take my chain nose pliers and at the very tip where the bend is basically, I'll grab onto that and then just do a little kink out so we get that shape because then it hooks in much easier and nicely in the loop. And now the other end I just need to repair so we can actually slip it into that final link. So again I take my smallest step on the pliers because that's what I was using when I was putting the links together and place it about the midpoint, a little bit below the midpoint of the tip to the bottom of that loop there and then push that loop end back around towards itself so something a bit like this, you can see it's that same principle as the links. Now this part is ready, so I'm going to grab my bracelet here and I'm on the final link that's still open. I'm going to take the hook part that I just made. Now that loop is going to go inside the open loop. On the final link, the same principle as all links were put together. You can see it slots in just nicely. Then I'm going to close up that final link with the beads on and the spirals. So that's secure. And now obviously because we're not going to be adding and attaching anything else, you want to make sure that this hook part isn't going to fall out. So I'm also going to just close that one up. So you literally just push it together. And then that's going to be nice and secure. And nothing's going to be able to fall out from there. And this is now the hook end of the clasp. Now for the loop on the other end I'm going to grab the other length of wire that I cut off and then again I'm starting not right in the middle but close to the middle and then I'm going to put a bend in, now this time about 90 degree and then I'm going to take my 6 step bell making pliers again and it's up to you again here how large you want your loop to be. I'm going to use my third largest First of all, place that on that bend and then make a full circle all the way around so we have something a bit like that. Now to secure that in place, I'm going to grab onto it my pliers and then wrap this tail around just below the loop. 
And again, making sure the reps are nice and tight. Just two or three times, wherever you feel is necessary. Now that's going to be fine. I'm going to cut off the excess. Squeeze down the very end. And then we need to do the other end, which is going to be the same principle, but in the process of the loop on the other end, we need to then attach it to the bracelet because it's going to be permanently attached. Now, first of all, make sure, again, you leave a little bit of space there from the previous wraps. And I put it to the side like that. Then I put in the bend. And here I then take, I'm just going to go down one size because this loop doesn't need to be too large. So I'm taking the third smallest in this case, put it on top of that bend, bring the wire all the way around to create that full circle. You bring it a little bit further. So like that. And now before we finish this loop off, we just need to attach it to the bracelet. So I grab the other end of the bracelet and you can see here we don't have a loop like we did on the end where we attached the hook. And when we attach the links throughout, we have kind of the back side or the bent part there. So that's actually what we want to use. So I'm going to just hold my bracelet like this. And then I have the little component, the loop part, I want to sit like this. So that means I need to attach this by just flipping it around and then putting this end through from below like this and then feeding it all the way through so that bend on the first link ends up sitting inside of this loop and it's in the right direction. You can double check obviously that it's all sitting correctly. And now we then have to finish this off while it's attached to the bracelet. So again, I'm putting my pliers on the circle there so it keeps its shape. And then I just use this end to wrap around right below it and basically fill in that gap that we left. Just until we haven't got any more space to wrap. Have a look here. And then when you run out of space, cut off the excess and then just flatten the wire in to make sure you can't feel it. There we go. And you now have your loop attached. And like I said, you can see that initial, the first loop that we made, it's up to you how large you want that. But then we have our bracelet with a functioning clasp. That's also nicely incorporated into the bracelet and very much kind of blends in. Always using the same technique. So that's how you make this beaded version of the Egyptian coil bracelet. And I just think it adds a lot of interest and especially you can add some color to your piece as well. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now I do have other Egyptian inspired jewel tutorials, so you can check them out on my channel. I'm gonna have playlists as well. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.